All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, attending today's service and uh, happy Father's Day. Um, happy Parents' Day. Uh, usually we celebrate um, Parents' Day during uh, Mother's Day because it's during the um, Dharma school year. And right now we're, of course, still having service. And so we're able to have the opportunity to celebrate uh, Father's Day together. Uh, but again, um, I think it's important for us to say uh, Happy Parents' Day to all the parents um, in the kids' lives. Thank you so much for uh, doing everything for the families. Uh, we definitely appreciate you. Okay, so we'll begin with opening meditation. If you could all please join me in Gasho. Whatever living beings there may be, feeble or strong, long, stout, or of medium size, short, small, large, those seen or those unseen, those dwelling far or near, those who are born as well as those who are yet to be born, may all beings be happy and well. Nam Wami Dawutsu. 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 Okay, we'll continue with the three treasures. Fortunate is it to be born into human life. Now we are living it. Rare is it to encounter the teachings of the Buddha. Now we hear it. If we do not seek the truth of the Dharma in this life, in what life shall we find it? Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in Buddha. May we all together absorb into ourselves the principle of the way to enlightenment and awaken within us our highest aspiration. I take refuge in Dharma. May we all together be submerged in the depth of the Dharma and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in Sangha. May we all together become units in true accord in a life of harmony in a spirit of universal brotherhood, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Even through ages of myriad of kalpas, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful teaching. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of the Tagata's teaching. Namu Amida Butsu. Namu Amida Butsu. Namu Amida Butsu. Namu Amida Butsu. Namu Amida Okay, uh, we'll continue with the chanting of Jusege. Shoot, 
愛知縁縁、ねしこもあん、へんそくしょあくの、つらつぜんしゅうもん、こそじょうまんぞ、いよろじぽん、日月秋秋季、天候温布言、一周開放像、高生苦毒音、上王大集中、世法死死苦、不要一切も、具足修徳を、願念失情も、得意三界を、女仏無下地、つらつみ不祥、願がくえに、とし最初そん、しがにゃこか、大戦の感動、こくしょてに、とうち、Okay, now we'll have the recitation of the golden chain. Golden chain. I am a link in Amida's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I will keep my link bright and strong. I will be kind and gentle to every living thing. And protect all who are weaker than myself. I will think pure and beautiful thoughts, say pure and beautiful words, and do pure and beautiful deeds. May every link in Amida's golden chain of love be bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namu Amida Butsu. 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 All right.、Um, I don't know about anyone else, but it makes me kind of want to eat a baked potato. Okay, we'll get into the、uh, Dharma talk. So, to begin today's talk,、uh, I'd like to address something that was said in the comments in last week's talk. So,、uh, there was a claim that our Sangha. Uh, was racist. So, to argue, argue either side、uh, would not be a productive use of time. 
If someone calls another person a racist, it means that they've made up their mind that this other person is a racist. So what would it take for them to decide that they aren't? Nothing I can say. And if the other person was not a racist, how could I prove that they aren't? I couldn't. So again, to argue either side is not a productive use of time. I think we can all agree that being racist is bad and we want everyone in our Sangha to be treated compassionately regardless of their race. If I just tell all the people on earth, hey, stop being racist, do you think they will say, oh, okay, Reverend Matt said so, so I should probably stop being a racist? No, of course not. But I've been trying to create a message that will hopefully make people think twice about their actions. I have been speaking and building every week uh, for the past couple weeks to try to lay a foundation for a deeper discussion on this topic. And uh, what happened last week kind of forced my hand to talk about it maybe a little sooner than I had prepared for, but nonetheless, I was going to talk about it anyways, so why not now? In the first talk in this series, I spoke about split-second categorizations that we make about people as soon as we meet them. In the second talk, which was last week, I spoke about implicit bias, which is characteristics we attribute to those split-second categorizations. So to recap a little bit, when we see anything for the, for the first time, we have a reaction without even thinking. And then we have a reaction to that reaction, still without thinking. So for instance, if you're walking down a street and you see a man who's crying and holding flowers, you might think, oh, he's crying, he must be sad. Oh, flowers, he must have had a date. This is the initial reaction. Your next reaction might be, he must be a bad boyfriend. <laughs> You've never met this man. You know nothing about him. You might even think a second later, why did I think that? It's probably just allergies. But without even thinking, uh, we draw conclusions about someone just like that. Last week, I also mentioned that we learn to make these conclusions from many different places. But it's important for us to think critically about these assumptions that we make. So to look at this from a different angle, I would like to begin a discussion on fairness. So the Cambridge Dictionary defines fairness as the quality of treating people equally or in a way that is right or reasonable. I think that's a pretty clear and straightforward definition, but I think it's probably better to understand it in thinking about its opposite, unfairness. I think we've all, at some point in our lives, said the words, that's not fair. Imagine if one person got one scoop of ice cream and another person got two. Is that fair? Uh, it becomes especially apparent if we're sharing food with someone. So my life like completely revolves around food, so it's always with food with me. But if we try to split uh, french fries evenly, we got to make sure it's right. You know, maybe there's not enough french fries for us to count each individually, but you got to make sure the pile is correct. And then if there's like a long one and you move one over, you got to bring like a short one back. Anyway, we actually, uh, from a biological standpoint, have a physical reaction when uh, we feel unfairness. So something happens in our brains that triggers our fight or flight response. If things are fair, we don't necessarily feel uh, anything good, but we are so anxious when things aren't fair. So does everyone think, <clears throat> so as we understand when we have uh, something fair, then uh, we don't have any kind of reaction, but if things are unfair, then um, as humans, we have this reaction of, oh, that's not right. Something is wrong. Uh, so now we've kind of discussed the definition of fairness and maybe some examples of what would be fair or unfair. And I think we can all agree that if things are equal, then it's fair, right? Well, not so quick. <laughs> like many things in Buddhism, uh, it's not so simple. So I've talked a lot about food so far. Now imagine if I went out with a friend after, after this service and he's full because he had a big breakfast, but I'm hungry because I haven't eaten yet. Would it be fair to get the same amount of food? 
Or let's say I need glasses, but he doesn't. Should we get the same prescription lenses? Is that fair? Or what if it's something just that I like to do, but maybe he doesn't? So if I like to play chess and he doesn't, is it a fair use of our time if we spend three hours playing chess? So as you can see, being fair doesn't always mean equal or the same. Sometimes for it to be different is, it for, is for it to be fair. So this idea of fairness being relative also brings up this notion of privilege. Imagine you're in a competition with another person to see who could get someplace the fastest, the quickest. But before anything started, one of your competitors was given a bicycle. Now they have an advantage over you. They have a privilege. And that's pretty clear from your point of view. You're at a disadvantage and they're at an advantage. They have a privilege. But what about the person on the bike? They feel like they're still working hard. And now what if there's a third person in this competition and they get a sports car? From the perspective of the person on the bicycle, they're at a disadvantage. They don't see the advantage they have over you because they're focused on the disadvantage they have to the sports car. And this is what I mean when I say that privilege is relational. Now I'm going to attempt to pull all of this together. So even though the Buddha left society and didn't tell us how to deal with societal problems, it still remains that as Buddhists, we try to see true reality beyond our own flawed human judgment. So let's return to the metaphor of competition. As humans, we're only focused on ourselves. So this is kind of the natural state of human beings. We're always thinking, me, 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 why me, why am I suffering? We see all of the competitors that are more advantaged than us, and we think it's unfair. And then we even do the opposite with other people where we ignore those that are disadvantaged. Or even worse, we think that they deserve to be disadvantaged. If we were enlightened, we would be able to see all the competitors. And not only that, we would be able to see why. Why some people got bikes, why some people got sports cars, why some people got rocket ships, even before they started this competition. As humans, we cannot comprehend the why. We cannot see into the limitless past and karma conditions like a Buddha would be able to. So to us, life is unfair. That is the truth. That is the reality. People are born with advantages and people are born with disadvantages through no fault of their own. I'll try to get more into specifics in my next talk, but for now, let's continue with the competition metaphor. Now imagine there is another competitor. Before they started, someone tied their shoelaces together. This person is really at a disadvantage. They might work as hard or even harder than the person with the bike or the sports car, but it will be so much more difficult for them to get further. We could just care about ourselves, but as Buddhists and as people trying to be compassionate beings, the best thing we could do would be to help the person with the tied shoelaces. The worst thing we could do is to say that it's that person's fault for having their shoelaces tied. And now to jump from the metaphor to real life, this is essentially what it is to be racist. So let me try to break that down. When you look at someone and you judge them by their race, you are judging them by something that they had no control over. They were born to their parents. No one chooses their parents just like no one chooses their race. But we attribute characteristics to people based on their race. And I say we as a society because those characteristics have to come from somewhere. They're perpetuated from society. And again, I might get into this a little bit more next week. But it is a societal problem. And it influences our implicit bias. So you remember from last week, implicit bias? It influences our implicit bias to think that way. Essentially, when you judge someone based on their race, you are blaming them for the disadvantages that they were born with. 
And as Buddhists, we have to recognize that this is going on in our own heads. And even more importantly, to do something about it. Now this means something different for each individual, just like within Buddhism, we have many different paths. But whatever path we choose to take, we should respond with compassion. And when we do that, we can build a world that is fair for all beings. If you could please join me in Gosho. Namu Amida Butsu. 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 Okay, uh, now we'll have our closing gatha. We'll sing uh, farewell. for closing meditation. The Buddha said, Ananda, those who are judgmental will pass judgment on them. This one has same qualities as the other. Why should one be inferior and the other superior? That judgment of theirs will indeed lead to their harm and suffering for a long time. Therefore, Ananda, do not be judgmental regarding people. Do not pass judgment on people. Those who pass judgment on people harm themselves. Namu Amida Butsu. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for uh, attending service. I hope everyone has a uh, wonderful uh, rest of their Father's Day, of their Parents' Day. Um, let's see, we, we were going to have trivia last week, but nobody signed up. So <laughs> we're going to have uh, trivia again coming up this week. Um, and we will, we, I won't invite anyone to participate, but we will make it a video to watch uh, live so people can watch it. And then maybe if people um, enjoy seeing it and they want to participate, then they can. Uh, but I'm trying to create uh, this kind of fundraiser for the trivia. So look out for that. Watch it. You know, maybe watch and play along or something. And then hopefully we can get uh, some people to get interested enough to actually play with us. So thank you again, everyone. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Please take care of yourselves and each other.